the philosopher's stone is more complex than turning lead to gold and imparting eternal life. With the stone, an alchemist believed, they could turn invisible or fly or walk through walls or endure unbelievable cold. With the stone, an alchemist transcended the material world. They wielded heaven on earth. To paraphrase Carl Jung, they redeemed the deity that is lost and sleeping in matter. In the West, alchemy was reborn through re three wars. In the 4th century BC, Alexander the Great invaded Persia, taking the ideas of Aristotle and others into the Middle East. 900 years later, the Islamic Caliphate begins and in cities like Baghdad, the tradition is born again. 400 years after that, the Crusaders start stealing from the libraries of the Muslims and taking alchemical works to Christendom. Thus starts the Roman period of alchemy. In the West, they use crucibles and fire and mercury. They lined up their operations with how the stars behaved and what they ate and whether they had sex and as they worked in their crucibles with what seems in hindsight like a tragic desire their materials died, were born and got married. Johann Betcher said that the chemists are a strange class of mortals impelled by an almost insane impulse to seek their pleasures amid smoke and vapour, soot and flame, poisons and poverty. Yet among all these evils I seem to live so sweetly that may I die if I were to change places with the Persian king. Over in the east they sought gold and immortal life too and as well as the other things and they too sought to purify and transcend the heaviness of matter and to achieve liberation there they used uh, their own bodies more than crucibles and they used meditation and music and breathwork and diet alchemy was heavily wrapped up in even indistinguishable from traditions that are still with us including Taoism, Ayurvedic medicine and yoga. Carl Jung thought that alchemy was saying something really important about who we are. He believed that the alchemists had projected their unconscious into the darkness of matter. He observed alchemical symbols particularly the mandala happening spontaneously and with great impact in our dreams. And he took these as manifestations of the psyche's attempt to achieve balance and wholeness. He viewed the alchemical tradition as a sort of library of our collective unconscious. And he concluded that nature is self-healing. If we look at the symbols of alchemy, which include the mandala, the Ouroboros, or the dragon eating its tail, the hermaphrodite, the phoenix, the marriage of the sun and the moon, the egg, the caduceus, or the staff with two serpents wrapped around it, they have in common a joining together, a harmonization and a rebirth. And looking at the Ouroboros, what is it really other than the sun? The other thinker who stays with me is Messia Eliade. He felt that alchemy was a deeply revealing haunting of our imagination that went back to the mythological revolutions of the Iron Age. Through cross-referencing the beliefs of many different cultures, both ancient and from his own time, 
he comes to the conclusion that everywhere he finds this belief that caves and mines are compared to the vaginas of Mother Earth and that the ores that come from them are embryos and they are in fact growing, ripening inside the Earth in geological time towards gold at full maturity. In other words, by mining metal ores and smelting them under great heat, humans began to precipitate a birth from Mother Earth. They were superseding the rhythm of nature and they were speeding up time itself. Eliade understands the alchemical quest to come out of this surprising but widespread world view in which not only are metal ores embryos or sometimes fruits in the earth but also that gold is an embryo in full maturity. In other words, they are all maturing at a very slow rate towards gold. The meaning of the philosopher's stone, he would say, is to instantaneously achieve what it was believed nature is trying to achieve over millennia. The stone is a perfection of nature and alchemy is the attempt to heal the cosmos. Eliade's book is powerful and persuasive and also deeply annoying as these questions of the metaphysics of human history whirl around my mind what is sacred, what is alive, spirit, matter, animism, linear time, circular time how it all fits together when there's no reason why it should we could go further back even than the Iron Age and wonder, does the stone ultimately hark to a shamanic voyage? After all, a shaman on their journey may as well be a possessor of the stone, <coughs> free as they are from the laws of the earth. We could follow the thread of what humans have believed to be alive and not alive when René Descartes was visited by an angel who told him that the conquest of nature is to be achieved through number and measure and he was told that spirit was God, angels and human consciousness and everything else may as well have been a mechanism. The night when the philosophy of our time, mechanistic materialism, was dictated by an angel. But in fact that conversation is simply overwhelming and belongs more to the realm of poetry than logic. After all I don't know how my friends or perhaps even myself perceive time and ourselves and the world truly and after all perhaps it changes every day. Really, the only question I'm qualified to talk about is myself and why I was fascinated in the alchemists. It's not too clear, but I do get snapshots of ideas that keep recurring. I felt that alchemy is an incredibly rich field of metaphors that bubbles underneath the surface from business to religion, like an engine that drives us to try to turn lead into gold. In fact, I was deeply concerned with a future that was free from the suffering I was experiencing at that time. Alchemy is the ultimate metaphor of the possibility of transmutation and even redemption. I get the idea that it points to two myths that have gathered force since the gods have been left behind, the myth of progress and the myth of the individual. These two, I would say, parts of my imagination are why I became interested in alchemy. 
a keenly felt lack of community and a denial of death. Now I finish unsure exactly what I have learned and unsure what to do with the things I have other than perhaps to begin at the beginning of all of this which was in worshipping the sun.